Hey, my name's Brooke, and I'm from PrinterBot. So I'm the CEO founder guy. And I say that informally because uh, I'm just a guy. I don't have any uh, training. I don't have an electrical engineering degree. I don't have a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, I was literally a pastor for years and years and started making stuff. So I started doing, um, I started doing websites. And then when I, I stopped working at a church, I went over and I started doing websites. And that got a little boring. So I wanted to make something that you could hold in your hand. So really, I did, I did the Kickstarter just from being bored and not being able to hold it in my hand and have toys to play with. So I did the Kickstarter. Just give you a quick update of where PrinterBot is. So the Kickstarter, uh, you know, I wanted to raise 25,000 and build 50 bots. We raised 830,000 and sold 1,400 1, units, somewhere around there. And that was like a total life changer, right? Uh, a total shock in every single way. I mean, everything changed. And I've had a blast, but I gotta tell you, doing a startup that quickly is really, really hard for a guy that has no experience, right? But I'm here to, I really wanna cheer on the people that, you know, I've met some guys that are starting companies, man, and, and I'm so excited for people just jumping in with both feet. Who cares what you know? Just going for it, man. So that's what we've done at PrinterBot. And so, from the very beginning, I really wanted to create something that was, you know, something that I wanted to own. So if you watch my product line, you know, we kind of started out with this $500 bot and, uh, you know, that went crazy. And so we thought, well, we got to follow that up with something. So we made it a little bigger, a little smaller. And really from the very beginning, after buying a, a MakerBot cupcake and putting it together at the table with my boy and my kids, um, I knew that I wanted to make it smaller and I wanted to make it cheaper and I wanted to be easier to build, right? So to answer the question of, of you know, what, where are we going with 3D printing, I think one thing is just more accessibility, not just to the printers, because there are a lot of companies that are springing up around this, right? Um, but I think they're gonna get easier, and I just brought one I just wanted to show you. So we've kind of had that progression of, uh, you know, I wanted to be able to carry it with me. And so I do, I fly with my bots. I'm the only guy I know that, uh, has printed at 30,000 feet. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> you know, I was like, Margie, so I have the junior, it folds up and goes in your backpack. And uh, I had it on the plane and it runs off battery, so you can run our bots off batteries, it's just 12 volts. And uh, Margie was uh, beside me and I said, hey, hold this blanket. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? And so I just kind of reached in and I turned it on, I'm warming up the, the hot end, I'm, I'm printing with PLA. And it kind of smells like, like waffle syrup, you know? <laughs> And my wife, unfortunately, you know, my wife, we were printing on our kitchen table and then in the kitchen and then she banished me to the, the, uh, the laundry room and then eventually out to the garage where I started. And she hates the smell of ABS. So, um, and when you get 30 bots printing ABS, trying to get the Kickstarter done, man, it really stinks. So I, I've been doing a lot of PLA, which is like a biodegradable thing. She knows the smell. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, I got it to warm up, you know, and she's like, what are you doing? We're gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> anyway, so honestly, I wish I could tell you a cooler story, but I just printed a blob, you know? I was like really nervous, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> and about halfway through, it just kinda ran out of battery. So I was like, okay, at least I did it. But anyway, so I, I've, got, I've gotten bots down to smaller and smaller and smaller and easier to build. The nice thing about that is they're easier to manufacture. We, we do, we have three laser cutters. They run like 24 seven all the time. Um, we may, in the first year, uh, including the Kickstarter, you know, a guy that was having trouble, uh, you know, paying his house payment. And now I got to deal with, uh, in the first year, there's about $2.4 million of business gross sales. So we're set, we've got about 5,000 bots in the wild now. And which is really, really great to get so much feedback from people. So I, I really think our, our products are getting a lot better, um, but they're getting smaller. I just wanted to show you one. So this one is uh, tied up in cords. This one is the PrinterBot Simple. And this is a three and a half by three and a half by three and a half. And the cool thing about this, you know, I did acrylic just to be flashy. We make them in wood. Uh, it, it actually looks really cool, but I'm so scared, um, you know, about the, the uh, brittle in nature, nature of acrylic that these will eventually be done in metal. So we've kind of gone on this, um, this progression from, you know, what we can do and then kind of like a halfway step to what we want to do. And then there's the goal of what we will do. So right now we can do wood 
and we, we're replacing a lot of our parts in our bots. We've got like five different models, all different price range, um, all under $1,000. So like the juniors, uh, $400, and that's a kit. We also assemble if you want. But So anyway, we're just kind of this DIY company that's trying to get these in the hands of people. And I think this is, a, this is an interesting moment because this is going to retail in June for $299. So it's opening it up to people that weren't able to have access to a printer in the past. In fact, I just had a, one of the first uh, schools I went to was down in Berkeley, and, and it, uh, Christine, I think, I don't know where she is, but um, she, she said, hey, come down and show this to the kids. And so uh, I take the, uh, you know, take the bot down to the kids, and I kind of wondered, you know, what are people going to think at this young age of, I think it was sixth grade, are they going to be interested in 3D printing? Well, they were. I mean, they attacked it. And now she gives me a report that uh, now they're watching the website. When's this simple going to go on sale? They're saving up their money. She, she literally said, they're spending all their bar mitzvah money on printers now. <laughs> and I thought, that's awesome, because I have a kid in my meetup group that that was his uh, bar mitzvah. You know, he, I want the, the printer for the bar mitzvah. And his dad surprised him, and he said, um, this is like 11, 12, year old, uh, 12 years old, about to be 13. And uh, his dad said, well, I'm getting him one early, but for his bar mitzvah, now I want your company to come down and just bring a whole bunch of printers and you're the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, are you serious? He goes, I'm dead serious. He wants you guys there. I said, like, okay, we'll come. <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make is it's, it's going to be so much easier for a kid to own a printer very soon. And that's exciting to me. So we really want to get them in, in the hands of kids and I'm so passionate about education. So where before, you know, it was like I would talk to people about 3D printing and, you know, how do we get into education? And they'd say, well, we've got a school that, you know, we put, I'm not picking on MakerBot, but they're a well-known name, right? Um, so they're pretty popular in schools. Um, the, but the problem is, you know, there's one bot because of the cost. There's one bot for one classroom. Now they're having, now we're having conversations with Project Lead the Way and some other organizations that are saying, I, you've got it down to now we can have one bot per kid. And now I know that not every kid is interested, but when you have these design classes, you know, they're in there for that purpose. So I think it's going to be really exciting what we see in education. So that's, that's the simple. I wanted to show you that. Now, just real briefly, um, a couple of things that, uh, that PrinterBot's doing. Um, we, are do, we are working on a DLP uh, printer, and uh, kind of like Form Labs, right? And I bought, um, I, you know, I had this little, I told my wife, I'm going to tell them about the, the DLP, and she's like, it's supposed to be a secret, and I'm like, I don't know, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but um, I think using it, the one that we have, uh, we have it working, it, it just started working last week, we're, it's kind of fun, you guys might like it, um, we're, we're using the printer board, which is, you know, kind of just the regular electronics that we've been using with, uh, it's a derivative of Teensy and Arduino um, derivative. And that's been great. We're going to use that to run the printer. But we love the Raspberry Pi. So we're using the Raspberry Pi to run a little web server. And so you get your phone or any browser out and just log into the web server. And you actually control the printer from your phone using Raspberry Pi. So it's kind of fun. And uh, so we, we print. And the, i got to tell you the scene because, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm a regular guy. And uh, there's nothing fancy about our shop. It's like a warehouse, you know. So Caleb is my 15-and-a-half-year-old uh, um, engineer. Uh, he's just a kid I'm trying to mentor, and, and he, I'm teaching him how to design and learn about business, and, and he's going to be a part of the company. So Caleb, I said, Caleb, get, get the DLP set up. I want to make sure it prints before I go to the, the conferences. And so he goes, okay. And so he comes and gets me in my office and says, hey, we're ready to try it. We're ready to try it. Come on in. He's really excited. You know, he's been working on this on and off with me for like six months. And anyway, so... He goes, come on in. And I said, where is it set up? He goes, well, the only room I could find that's dark enough is the bathroom. <laughs> so we're, four of us are in the bathroom, and it st finally starts printing. And it prints this little bitty cube. You know, it's not very impressive to show you. But it prints this little cube. And we get about halfway done with it, and we had to stop the print because Caleb's mom showed up to pick him up. <laughs> so my wife was like, don't take that little thing. I said, I'll just tell him that his mom came so we couldn't finish it. Well, the, the one other thing I wanted to show you is, you know, a lot of people have talked about printing, printing with um, carbomorph is the, the term for this specific filament that is, uh, it conducts electricity. And I don't mean a little bit. This is like the real deal. And we got online and downloaded the plans from uh, what, the information from the university in England that published a paper. 
they didn't publish the recipe, so we've been trying to figure out the ratios of you know, how much ash to this polymorph. And so you come up with this stuff and it's pretty amazing. You can print circuits with this. It's real, we're making it in very small quantities, like here's a quantity of one. <laughs> and it took a day. <laughs> But the future is cool. If you combine that with our triple extruder, you'll be able to do uh, flexible joints in a robot hand with hard ABS and run electricity up and down the fingers all in one print. So I'm excited about what the future's, future brings. Hope you come check us out at PrinterBot.